what's up my centric unit it's the central man here so I was n had no desire to do a review on both two parts of WrestleMania 36 I know you got the situation with the coronavirus but at the same time the card was a bit bit um not really WrestleMania worthy you know some of the matches on the card it's just what it is I you know had some thoughts on it I decided to you know I'll give it a shot so we're going to do a review on the match on the pre-show for part one. That is Drew Gulak, Tick and Cesaro. I think it was an okay of a match. Um, throughout the whole bulk of the match, you had Gulak locking in Cesaro. Really work on the arm of Cesaro, like setting him into the, uh, the still steps, throwing him into the, uh, the ring post, lock, locking him in the uh, arm bar, but Cesaro got the victory. Hit the UFO onto Gulak to score the victory. It was just like nothing special. It's just eh. It's a why the UFO. It's basically place Gulak on his uh, shoulder, spin him around a little bit. I like the the the, the swing, the giant swing, the Zara swing. That was much better than this. It's just that's for me, you know. Anyway, the contest for the main show is Michael Cole and uh, JBL. So the first match to kick off the main show, we got the WWE Women's Tag Team Title Match. Um, the Kabuki Warriors, that is Asuka and uh, Kairi Sane, taking on Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I say, an, okay, an okay of an opener. It wasn't like super great, but at the same time, it wasn't like uh, bad. It was just like it to me. Um, like, it's just like, it's like, it was a bit boring at some points. I think it was a uh, 15 minutes of a match. You know, it's just... Too long, not too long, but it's just kind of some parts of the match kind of dragged out a bit. Um, you know, like you had, uh, you know, a lot of near falls. You had basically you had Oscar locked, uh, Ficky locked, um, yeah, Oscar locked Nikki in the um at the Oscar lock. Alexa did the twist of bliss onto Oscar, and then Kyrie hit the spear onto Alexa. That was cool. I thought they're going to win it, you know, retain the tag team belts, but. In the end, you had Bliss hit the twist of Bliss, uh, really a worse twist of Bliss onto Kyrie. Basically, he didn't hit her in, like in the stomach area. She he kind of hit her into the legs to score the victory. And yep, yeah, Bliss and um, Nikki uh, Nikki are regained the tight team belts because they because Oscar and Kyrie won the tight team belts at Hell in the Cell. I think that the reason why. Kyrie and Asuka won the tag team belts because of Riho, because Riho became the AEW World Champion on the very first night on Dynamite. That was like way back in October. I bet that's the reason why the hold the belt. But the reason why Kyrie and Asuka are tag team champions because of Riho. Anyway, you know, I'm not a big fan of Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. You know, they're corny as a baby face. I like them as heels. Like Alexa, she's a, a good trash talker. And Nikki, she's more of better off as the psycho Nikki from Sanity. Anyway, so that was, I give it my rate. I I give this a, uh, I give about uh, three and a half stars. Kind of dragged on a little bit, but it was actually I get three stars, man. It was good, a good opener. Anyway, so the second match uh, of part one of WrestleMania 36, we got Baron Corbin versus Elias. This was after when. Baron Corbin throw Elias out of the balcony. It was so r ridiculous and anticlimactic. Elias in this match did not sell his injuries after that. That fet, after he got pushed over the balcony, N it was ear to me. Nothing special. Uh, uh, Elias basically Corbin was about you know trying to cheat, trying to like roll up Elias while his feet are near the, near on onto the ropes and but the referee caught him out. Uh, uh, Elias pin rolling, a uh, pin uh, not rolling a uh, pin Corbin with a roll up to score the victory. It was just eh. Yeah, this match was just eh to me. Okay, and then we got the Raw Women's uh, Championship match. We got uh, Becky Lynch taking on Shanna Baszler. I think it was, this was a bit better than the uh, the Women's Tag Team Title match from earlier. This match was so physical. Like one more of the match, you had Shanna kind of swing Becky into the announce table. Try to be Becky at their own game, like locking Becky in the um, uh, the a normal armbar and the disarmor. Like before, before that, you know, Be Becky was riding to the performance center on a truck with Becky's face on it. Says the man on it. 
you know, you can tell we, it's the machine. Put, I found like Becky's push so far so forced. It's no, it's not really organic. Um, I think you had um, a roll up. Um, you know, you had uh, Shanna kind of locked Becky in, in her uh, submission finisher, but Becky kind of uh, countered it a little bit, did a roll up on Shanna while she's on the uh, hold, and won. I, I was disappointed because they book Shanna up uh, as this dominant badass, make her into this type of female sh version of Brock Lesnar, and she can't even get the job done beating Becky. It, I found it's disappointing because Becky holds the belt for one year now. She can't even like uh, drop the belt. I think my theory is that the one person's gonna beat um Becky uh, Becky for the title is Ronda because it's been like one year since Ronda Rousey showed up on WWE television. The last show was WrestleMania 35. It's just pointless. Like this is Shanna Baszler's first uh one on one singles match on the pay per view on the main roster, and she can't even and she lost. It's just like, what's the point? You know, I'm not going to go into it. I think it was, you know, like you say, a good match. Um, uh, and then we've got the Intercontinental title match between, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan. I think this was a good match. Not the best. You know, you had like, um, you know, you know, you had Gulak and Bryan, you know, beat down Cesaro and Nakamura. I don't like the whole... Artist Collective, I think that's a crappy name. I feel like Factions and Dayday right now, it's so forced and not organic. Uh, it was okay, you know, throughout the whole bulk of the match, you basically just been Brian and Brian and uh, Sami Zayn saying, you know, doing the chops. I think it was the Blue Thunder Bomb. Brian did the, you know, the, the kicks. Um, did, I think, the running knee. Um, yeah, you had basically Cesaro and Zayn. Uh, not Cesaro and Zayn, Cesaro and Nakamura, kind of like um, throwing Gulak into the still uh, the still steps. Brian trying to do move on the top rope. Um, unfortunately, you know he eats a Havuna kick uh, by Zayn. You know in midair, that was cool, that was sick. Uh, so uh, yeah, Zayn retained the tag, uh, the Intercontinental title. I don't think it hit hurt Brian in the long run. I think the feud is still continuing between Gulak, Brian Gulak versus the Artist Collective, you know, Zayn, Na uh, Shinsuke, and uh, Cesaro. Um, see, um, and then we got, yeah, yeah, we got the, uh, the tag team title match, the SmackDown tag team title match. This is a ladder match for the SmackDown tag team titles. Unfortunately, it was not the traditional, normal tag team match, all, all, uh, all three tag teams in this match. Basically, it's basically you got the the tag team champions Miz and Morrison defend the belt against the New Day and the Usos. Unfortunately, you got you know, your Miz was pulled in the last minute due to illness. I don't know about the New Day members, so I think there was uh, some of them left. They kind of pulled back out because of the situation with the coronavirus. That is uh, Big E and uh, Xavier Woods. I think it was one of the Uso twins didn't show up. I think one. I think it was J Jay or Jimmy taking on Kofi Kingston and John Morrison. I think this is match of the night for me. Like one moment of the match, you had like uh, one of the Uso brothers. I think it's Jay or Jimmy, kind of like fell off the ladder, fell awkwardly, and kind of sell a bit of a knee injury. Kofi hit the Spanish fly onto Morrison. You know, like you know, hitting you know, like um, you know, yeah. I watch a lot of ladder matches. They were cool, like hitting each other with ladders, doing the move on the ladder. Like um, I think Uso did the spa uh the frog splash onto Kofi. What after like Kofi hit this Spanish fly on Morrison, like he had a, a you know and Uso took a really uh Jimmy I think it was Jimmy or Jay hit like a like you know did a did a like a sick bump like Morrison kind of throwed Jimmy or Jay off the ladder and onto the floor. That was um sick. He had all three members you know. Kofi, Jimmy, OJ, and also John Morrison. This is John Morrison's first WrestleMania match since uh, WrestleMania 27, nearly a decade ago. They kind of wrestle between the the titles. You know, the 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 ta the, the tag team titles are off the hook, and then Morrison kind of fell off the ladder, with holding both tag team belts. So yep, Miz and Morrison won this match. Or oh, basically, John Morrison won this match because Miz is. 
he didn't show up. So, you know, it's good for uh, you know John Morrison won the tag team belts. You know the, uh, the you know I think they're given you know they are kind of like the nostalgic acts. You know, Miz and Morrison because they haven't tag team for nearly a decade. I think you know I'll be okay with Usos winning it because they haven't really won the tag team belts for about well, two years now. I don't know, and uh, you know it'd be super predictable if New Day won. I'll be a bit pissed off because we've already seen New Day being tag team champions plenty of times now. So, okay, and then we got Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. Um, fucking good. What a good match. A second, a really second best match of the night. Like, um, like Kevin took some nasty bumps. Like he took a a back body drop on the ring apron. He took a, like a, a, was it a Falcon's arrow? Um, you know, you had basically, you know, Rollins was wearing this type of, um, messiah, like, type of, um, uh, coat, you know, because he just dubbed himself as the Monday Night Messiah, you know, he's like, Jesus, man, he looks like Jesus, man, and, and, you know, you know, um, uh, Rollins got, trying to get himself disqualified, hit him with the bell on Kevin Owens, and Owens got on the mic, Says this is not the actions of a of a god. This is you. This is an actions of a, a little. It really basically called Ron's a little bitch, and he said, uh, you know, and he basically want, and then said th this match restarted as a no disqualification match. Fucking good. It was physical at some points. Really physical. Like uh, Owens eats like a pop up power, uh, not pop up power bomb, a turnbuckle power bomb. He did perform the pop up power bomb onto Ron's. Ron's kick out from that. The one spot is that it was so not super that sick but it was cool like he you know he placed Rollins into the announce table he climbed on the Wrestlemania 36 sign jumped off the sign hit the uh landed onto the announce table dr really slowly dragged Rollins back into the ring hit the Stone Cold not I don't call him the Stone Cold Stunner hit the Stunner onto Rollins to win this match really physical but it was a really good match um, I'm not going to go into the fucking um, match between, you know, the the, the R-Truth thing. That was a segment. You basically had Mojo Riley defeat R-Truth for the 24-7 uh, championship. Okay, and then we've got the universal title match between Goldberg and Braun Strowman. It's just a typical Goldberg match. You know, he only works, t was it, two to three minutes uh, squash match. You know, Goldberg hits Strowman with two um, spears. And uh, Strowman hit um, Goldberg. With two running power slams to win this match and become the universal champion. For me personally, too little, too late. They should he should become the champion a long time ago, like in 27, 2017 or twenty eighteen. But doing it in twenty twenty, too little, too too little, too late in my opinion, man. You know it's you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let it um let it if they are gonna correctly book Storm correctly as champion, but I doubt it. Because he hold the IC title belt in January. I think he dropped it in March or February. Anyway, moving on to the main event. The main event we got AJ Styles versus The Undertaker in the bo Boneyard match. Basically, it's just basically um, a buried alive match. They're fighting in a graveyard. Yeah, this is Undertaker's first appearance as the American Badass since Survivor Series in 2003. There was a music called Metallica. I don't know. It's a new music, but it's. Like, I don't know what it's called. It's basically rock, rock and roll music in the background, but it's basically trying to be their version of the broken, the deletion match. But the, people are gonna overrate this match. Oh, this is amazing, but I don't think it's amazing. I think it's just, I think it's just, um, it was. Yeah, I think some stuff was ridiculous, but I think it was good for what it is. The played, you know, it served its purpose, like. Like, yeah, they're, like, they're fighting on the hearse, like, yeah, Undertaker bled, his arm was bleeding because he smashed the, his arm near the, uh, the hearse window. You gotta throw AJ into the, um, the, the front window of the hearse, that was cool. Yeah, they kind of, like, you called him, um, uh, called him Alan because that's his real name, Alan Neil Jones. Yeah, and then they kind of, you had, uh, Gallows and Anderson, uh, showing up, had this, um, you got, you had many people dress up, like, Fake Druids and Undertaker beat down the fake Druids, and I think he t beat down Gallows and Anderson uh, first time. Then AJ kind of throw, um, he hit him with like this type of stone onto Undertaker's back, throwing him into the uh, the, the hole. Looks he, 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 he's on this type of tractor or plow, 
but Taker transported out of the hole. You know, typical Undertaker thing. They were fighting near the sh yeah. The, the, the one moment they were kind of like um, AJ is doing trash talks like, "Oh, you're old," you know, "You're finished," and Taker gives AJ the middle finger. It's the first, you know, that's you know they had a lot of uh, P uh, TV fourteen elements in this match. They were fighting on the the fighting on the roof. Um, throwing, you know, AJ, uh, Taker throwed, uh, Gallows off the roof, Tombstone Power Drive Anderson on the roof, Chokeslam AJ off the roof, um, and then you got, like, uh, AJ says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't bury me, you go, trying to please for the Undertaker's forgiveness, and Taker says, I'm not gonna, bur I'm not gonna bury you, you're, you're, you know, he's, like, fake apology to AJ but he lied I think he beat beat uh, Big Boot uh, AJ into the hole buried him and Undertaker won this match it was so predictable and they had this uh, graveyard says you know AJ Styles 1977 to 2020 and Undertaker ride ride uh, left left the graveyard on his motorcycle and that's the end of part one of WrestleMania 36 I'm not saying this is match of the nights Match of the night for me has to be the tag team title match between uh, John Mor uh, you know, Morrison, Kofi, and one one member of the Uso brother. But besides that, I think it's the third. Uh, I think it was really good, but it wasn't amazing match because some of these Undertaker matches that could be a hit, but sometimes they're mo sometimes a mess. I think this is a slightly of a hit. You know, I think some parts are goofy. But at the same time, it, you know, I think it was good. So if it's purpose, you know, I think like with Gallows and Anderson, I think they are finished. You know, it, this match did not really, not really hurt AJ in the long run. You know, in the end, he had AJ's hand rose up a bit of the hole. But with Gallows and Anderson, they are finished. No, it's too little too late to build, rebuild them. You can build them so many times, but they book like losers now. They they should have be called the job of the jobbers club, man. That is. They're just jobbers, man. They're jobbing out to many people they face. You know, so yeah. So I give it um I give yeah, I give it about four four and a half stars. Or I give it I give it three stars. It was just what it is. A good match. You know, you both play their strengths. If it was AJ Undertaker Sting or Undertaker Matt Hardy doing the broken gimmick, that'd be a fantastic, but since it's, you know, you know, the whole stuff was, I you know, I was okay with AJ Styles' taker from the beginning. You know, it's all about, you know, AJ's, like, mocking, you know, dissing the Undertaker, you know, you know, talking about Undertaker's wife, Michelle, you know, Michelle McCool. You used to, used to, they kind of broke a little bit of kayfabe a little bit, you know, use, you know, Undertaker calling AJ Styles' real name, AJ, uh, Alan. But at the same time, it's you know it's not gonna like go you know the greatest match of Undertaker's career. No, I think it's slightly decent for what it is, you know. So anyway, uh, part one of WrestleMania 36, the rating for this, I'm gonna give it seven out of ten. Seven out of ten for part one of WrestleMania 36. I think the opening match was slightly decent. Uh, the women's match was good. Match of the night has to be the tag team title match in the ladder match. Um, the grave, the boneyard match is basically this is a buried alive match, the first buried alive match for nearly a decade. That was also good, and also some, you know, you had Corbin and Elias was eh. The, the, the you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into the R Truth uh, 24/7 title match. That was basically I put it in the bad. Had no, that should be scrapped, pulled from the card, and you know, Strowman and Goldberg is basically eh. It's just basically. You know, just a squash match. So, so that's my review of WrestleMania 36 Part One. Hope you like it. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Smash the like button and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. And um, yeah, uh, you know, stay tuned for Part Two of WrestleMania 36. So this is the Central Man officially signing out. Check you later.